Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be explaining options trading. Now, a quick dis a quick disclaimer: I am not a professional. Like the data might be inaccurate. Like I haven't even option traded before. It's quite uh, like dangerous, so I'm not advocating to do it. Um, it's only for information purposes. So yeah, so now let's get into it. Um, so this is gonna be a little bit of a, yeah, kind of finicky because I am using my school laptop right here. Uh, that should be good. All right, so let's get started. So let's say that this box thing right here is is a stock, okay? And what I want to do. So I want to take this stock, and I can either, so you can either trade the stock to a person, or you can buy this stock from a person. Um, it's kind of a, okay, so anyways, you can buy and you can sell this stock, okay. So it just circulates between people, right? As I said before, like I would zoom this in full screen, but um, Microsoft Whiteboard doesn't let you do that anymore. But anyways, so a stock will go, you know, between person and person. Um, so just a small example, but anyways, so stocks are circulating so when you're selling these stocks let's say this stock is ten dollars okay so when you're selling it you can you can either buy and sell it normally which is like buying a part of a company okay so it's like um so it's like let's take like google for example right it's quite a big company and i would say i this is my share this is like quite a large share, maybe like 5%. So I wouldn't have this much, but let's just use it as an example. Okay, so share. So share, I can buy it or I can sell it for its entire value. So that's like regular trading. So this is... um. Okay, but now let's go over to what options trading is like, so... So option trading is like this. So I have the same stock. I have the same stock. It's being bought and it's being sold between person to person, right? You get the idea. But what if I want to get this stock instead of for ten dollars, right? Like let's say I think that the stock market will either go down like this or I think it will go up like this. So those are two options, right? Now, what I'm trading right now is the option to buy. So option to buy. Or sell, of course. So what if I want to take this $10 stock and I know that the stock market, the stock is going to go like this, but I want to sell it instead of at 3 o'clock. Um... Ah, uh, well, the market ends at 4, so let's just say I want to sell it at 4, but I know that this stock will go down by 4, like this, okay? So what I want to do is I want to I want to get a profit. So let's say the stock will go down to $8 by then. That means that when we are buying the stock, when we are selling our stock, we get a $2 profit, right? So we get $2 difference here. So, because of this two dollars difference, this is why you might want to trade stock the options. So, instead of knowing that the stock will go like this, let's say you know the stock will go like this from three to four. Okay. So, when you know that the stock's gonna go up, you want to buy it. 
So this this was this was selling it. Okay, this was selling it. Now we're working on buying it. Okay, buying. Um. So when you're buying the stock, let me just get you guys in there. So when you're buying the stock, you want to buy it at a lower price when you know it's going to be at a higher price at that time. So that means you also get a $2 profit, but it's kind of indirect. So, so when the market is going like this, this is good for many reasons, right? But the only thing is when you are buying options, like when you're buying regularly, you can only lose 100% unless you buy on a margin or anything like that, which I won't get into. But when you're buying options, you can lose a lot more than 100% because you're obligated to buy or sell that stock. Like if I'm obligated to buy this this Apple stock, um, like that. So if I am obligated to buy this much of Apple at one hundred dollars rather than ninety dollars, one hundred is larger than ninety, right? So that means I lose ten dollars, and this is on a small scale. But what if it's like a thousand or ten a th ten thousand one million one hundred thousand you? Know? That gets quite, that gets quite large the amount of money that it takes in. So that's why you want to be careful now. What are puts and what are calls? So puts, puts. I'd like to think of it like you're putting a stock on the table. And by this, it means that basically you are selling your stock. You are selling the stock. When you're selling this stock, um, you're going to be selling it at a higher price than it's worth. So you will get some profit. Now, call. Call is buying a stock. You're calling for a stock. You're, it's like if you hop on the phone... Okay, look, if you are trying to call the stock to you, you want to call it, call stock. So when you're doing this, you want to buy the stock at a lower price than it's worth, okay? So that's puts and calls. So uh, let's see, what else could I explain? So this is very, this is very, very like, like if we say we have an iceberg here. And like this is the iceberg, you know, you know how there's more of the iceberg here, right? Like, so this is very superficial. That's what it is. This explanation is very superficial, you know. And I haven't even done options trading at all. But let me try explaining something else. Uh, let's see. Um. How about fractional trading? Okay, so fractional trading is like this. Let's say I don't have the money to buy an Amazon stock, which is, uh, it used to be $1,000 above 1000 Um, Recently, they had a stock split, so I think it's less, but let's say... This is worth a thousand dollars, but I don't want. I don't have a thousand dollars. So let's say, I'm like this guy who has like his pockets are empty. Okay, so this guy, he doesn't have much money, right? So how will he do some investing, right? So now. Because they, they want you to invest, they don't want you to, like, not invest. What they'll do is someone, like, usually, I think the company does it, like, Fidelity or Robinhood. Let's go. So, Robinhood or Fidelity will buy this entire stock, which is like this. Okay. 
and they'll buy the entire thing, which is $1,000. And what they'll do is they'll sell this to many people for less amounts of money. So let's say for 100 So now all these people, they own a very small share of the company. Like even smaller than there was before. So with this, if the company goes like this, they get money. And if the company goes like this, they lose money. Okay. Um, let's see, what else could we talk about here? What about, uh, what about, um, now lastly, let's talk about some crypto, cryptocurrency. Okay, so now with crypto, crypto is a currency, it's like the dollar, it's like the euro, I think that's the euro, I don't know, it's like the rupee, rupees like this, something like that, um, it's like all of those stuff, okay, and, but this is decentralized, now I'm not being paid, obviously, um, so decentralized, what does this mean, decentralized means, that no company owns all of it. No government owns all of it. No person owns all of it. Okay. Okay. Now, with with this this means that no matter who you are, like if you're, I don't know, let's say a hacker, that's, that's how I'm going to represent hacker, you can, you can buy, you can sell, you can sell your services, and no one knows. That doesn't mean crypto is bad, obviously, for example, for there's Bitcoin, there's Dogecoin. So that's like a dog, you know, so, so there's these two cryptos, uh, there's also Ethereum, I, I, don't, I have no idea what the Ethereum sign is, something like that, it has an E in it, but you can use crypto to, you can either do illegal stuff or you can do legal stuff, it's like any currency. For example, let's say that I, now I think, I think, I don't know for sure, but I think Tesla, which is another company that, you know, has the public stock exchange, I think Tesla now accepts Bitcoin. From people to buy the Tesla. Now, maybe this would be better for some people because, you know, big cryptocurrencies are kind of like an investment. So, with this crypto, you can buy stuff like, you know, like a Tesla or like, uh, you know, I really, I can't think of any other examples. Just various things you can buy with crypto. And then once you spend that crypto, you get this shiny new car. Now, obviously, you can't register the car without revealing who you are. Obviously, you can't do any of that without revealing who you are. Like, crypto still, even though crypto can't be tracked, the services that you use on it for can could be tracked. Like, when you buy a car, you need to register the car for a license plate. 
I mean, you could drive it around illegally. What are they going to do, right? Other than arrest you. But. Anyways. So that was my last topic. I guess we could talk about GameStop or we could talk about. We could talk about Dogecoin. We could talk about Twitter. Um, but I think that's all for this video. So thank you for watching and uh bye bye.